Good morning. Uh, first from Valdosta, shout out to Mr. and Mrs. J. Um, listen, man, we had some uh, really good times, powerful moments. Uh, this address is going out uh, basically kind of in response to some of the things I've been getting. Hey, uh, why are you jumping back on it now? Hey, we ain't seen you around. And Well, things were handled between me and Mr. and Mrs. Johnson. Um, and, you know, I fell back because I had a fundamental difference uh, in the way that this case was being handled legally. Um, and it's good to know that the Johnsons now are open. And let me tell you what they're open to. I need the brilliant legal minds to inbox me, man. I need the brothers and the sisters and the other folks of all nationalities who care about justice. I need those third good martial type of revolutionary legal minds. This one man cannot handle this case alone. This one man in a meeting that I helped coordinate in a meeting in June of 2016, which was with two, U two United States attorneys, one out of Ohio and one out of Georgia, and the head of the homicide division met with the Johnson family, told them they were closing the case, told them that the second autopsy was the most accurate, told them that they just don't have enough evidence to point to any individuals or one individual, told them all of this absent of their legal representation. How do I know? Because he and I were in the lobby during the Johnson's meeting. What type of counsel allows their client to walk into that kind of meeting alone? I feel there should be grounds to at least redo that meeting with counsel present. I'll say this again. I need the brilliant legal minds to inbox me. The Johnson family is open. They understand that they have to have a strong legal team. We got big information coming around the corner. If that's any incentive to some of you guys. The $300,000 attorney fees that they've been ordered to pay, I set through the entire hearing. There was at least 30 sustained objections by the opposition. This was when the Johnson family dropped the $100,000 civil lawsuit. Reasons for that have been stated publicly, but once we coordinate these meetings, we'll give you all the details. Well, I watched their counsel literally try the death of Kendrick Johnson in that court. I mean, details surrounding everything about the murder of Kendrick. And that wasn't the venue for that. That wasn't the hearing for that. I'm not telling these legal minds anything that they don't know. I even watched the judge say, it's not in my position to do this, counsel, but it would behoove you to argue the hours that these 16 attorneys who represent the 30-some-odd defendants at the time argue what their hours and their fees are. This is not the trial of the murder of Kendrick Johnson. That's big. That's important, man. These derailments that has the nation now not supporting Kendrick collectively, many in our community, are, not, are no fault of their own. It's their counsel. People know that attorney Ben Crump, who is a friend of mine, was on this case. People say, well, hey, Crump left when the cameras left. That's not true. That's just not true. He left because he kept combating with counsel. Now, since then, please believe the Johnsons understand that they are in control of their son's case, not any one attorney. It's bigger than any one attorney. So, man, inbox me so I can set up some meetings with the Johnson family. There's been a plethora of other errors. Some that have been highlighted publicly, so I'm not saying anything that the public doesn't know. But it's now time to get on board and help strengthen this legal team. If you care about justice, I've been seeing a lot of people now, you know, over the years, but I'm talking about just recently, you know, knowing that this boy was murdered. Well, we all know that if we're going to fight 
this system. We need a strong team. Not one gentleman that operates slow on emails. Not one gentleman that puts clients in awkward and damaging positions. Inbox me if you or someone you know can help this family.